friends we will now study another important method of extending shelf life of wide ranging food materials including fruits vegetables chocolates and such etc etc where we provide some sort of coating which is commonly tell edible coating to manipulate the two processes like respiration transpiration oxidation etc so the edible coating as i told you the primary purpose is to provide a barrier by applying some sort of coating that is the barrier to microorganisms barrier to moisture to provide barrier to gas and salute migration in the food and by controlling these processes it increases the shelf life of food it increases the quality of the food edible coating is normally applied on the food surface where a thin layer of edible film is formed directly on the surface or in between the different layers of the food materials as might be in the case of chocolates etc edible coating can extend the shelf life of the food by inhibition of the microbial growth and by the improvement of the quality of the food system it can also do or preserve bioactive nutrients present in the food it can inhibit chemical processes like deteriorative chemical processes like oxidation etc edible coating can preserve physico chemical characteristics of the food such as texture color and organoleptic properties and it is also used more commonly nowadays to protect probiotic bacteria or application of probiotic bacteria or to protect their viability during storage and during processing increasing consumer demand for ready to eat foods and the foods which are processed are preserved with no additives etc environmental issues such as recycling and biodegradability of the conventionally used <coughs> packaging films changes in the retail and distribution practices associated with the globalization as stricter regulatory requirements regarding consumer health and safety are some of the drivers for edible coating innovations these are the issues which have encouraged the manufacturer or industry to follow edible coating so you can see here in this that is a tomato is shown in the picture so obviously there are various uh, agents like micro bl agents are some that uh, biological agents etc which from the environment all those things they continuously they are contacted they come in contact with the tomato here in this case or in general the other food materials and they hasten the deteriorative processes so now a some sort of coating is used you can see here that is the edible coating so this coating provides barrier maybe to moisture it provides barrier to oxygen it provides barrier to the microorganism it pro may provide barrier to the antioxidant etc and accordingly their contact their growth their activity on the food surface is controlled or sometimes stopped totally and this ultimately results into the extension of the shelf life of the food material as well as in increasing in the safety of the product or improving its quality as the case may be so also there is another term active edible coating that is this active active edible coating refers to the 
incorporation of functional additives or extracts from the natural sources such as antimicrobials etc or antioxidants etc to the coating system and these that is in order to make the polymer which is to be coated or the coating system to be more functional to make it more to improve its functionality to make the edible film more functional to increase the shelf life of the food and to provide a high quality product may be both fresh produce or it retains its freshness or it improves its safety so this films can be functionalized to perform these actions there are certain problems associated with the edible coating which need to be resolved to make the technology successful there is of course there is a modification of internal atmosphere in this edible coating and this modification of the internal atmosphere can increase the disorders associated with high carbon dioxide or low o2 if the coating applied is not proper if the coating becomes too thick if the coating becomes too thin if it doesn't have proper strength if doesn't it it doesn't provide proper permeability etc then these problems might because the oxygen concentration might be too low or high, carbon dioxide concentration may be too high and this will rather doing rather doing a good job it will rather create problems there are certain reports in the literature like waxing of apples and pears they have been commercially used but it results into the inhibition of ripening processes or controlling the respiration rates but there are also certain uh, reports particularly when the waxing wax coating was not proper it resulted to the alcoholic flavor development due to anaerobic fermentation maybe in that case very low oxygen concentration or the coating became too thick that oxygen availability was completely stopped it oxygen was there. so material respired anaerobically anaerobic fermentation took place similarly the apple coated with sucrose fatty acid esters had few detrimental changes in terms of fruit firmness allowing and weight loss that is these were all maintained but the fruit has increased incidence of core plus tomatoes coated with 0.6 mm gin films produced alcoholic of flavors so these are these report indicates that if the coating is not proper the material may spoil quickly it may be inferior in color in flavor or such other so that is very important that the coating should be properly done wax and sucrose fatty acid esters although they are most widely used coating materials but consumers do not like it because particularly the wax coatings imparts waxy taste so this has led to the development of the new coating material or alternative coating materials that is fully edible and that do not impart any undesirable taint taste odors etc and also which is easy to apply and where it is easy to maintain the characteristics of the coating materials or characteristics of the coating so that you can maintain the desired effect desired concentration of gases and all those things to get the desired benefits effect of edible coating on internal gas composition and their interaction with the quality parameters of course must be determined in order to make the edible coating effective color change loss of firmness ethanol fermentation decay ratio and weight loss of edible coated fruits and vegetables are the important quality parameters which means there is edible coating should be of such order that these materials should be intact these characteristics of the material should be intact are to just to ensure 
to make sure that whether your coating was good or bad materials can be analyzed for these quality parameters. So, the there is one important thing that the success of edible coating of fruits and vegetable depends mainly on selecting films or coatings which can give a desirable gas consumption that is appropriate for a specific product. As I told you that is, that, that is very important and there are various factors which govern to this. So, let us first see for the what are the consideration for selecting edible coating material because that is very very important. If coating as I told you if coating is too thick it may lead to the detrimental effect that is detrimental effect can result increase in the internal gas concentration. The internal gas concentration may be below to that required or to that of a desirable limit or even the beneficial level and there is a associated increase in the CO2 concentration. Thick. If the thickness is not proper, the CO2 concentration may be high, O2 concentration may be low and these conditions as you have seen in the earlier case in the case of Hypola and PR6 that are reported literature say that this results into the problems or anaerobic fermentation etcetera. So, these problems can be remedied by taking appropriate steps such as developing several edible coatings, controlling wet ability of the edible coating, measuring gas permeation properties of the selected coatings by measuring diffusion properties of skin and flesh of the selected fruits, predicting the internal gas composition for the coated fruit and observing effects of the coating on the quality changes in the fruit or in the coated fruits. So, that are the parameters which one should take into consideration while selecting the edible coating material. Then how to get the desired permeation properties of edible coating like permeability of oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor that is it can be calculated using this equation P is equal to Q x by A t delta P, where P is the required permeability, required permeability of O 2, required permeability of C O 2, water vapor as the case may be. A is the area of the film in the square meter, T is the time, delta P is partial pressure difference of the gases present across the film and x is the thickness of the edible film which is to be maintained. So, by this parameter one can control the permeability or gas permeation property and that is very very important aspect as far as this required for the success of the edible coating. Another important property is the wettability and coating effectiveness. In fact, effectiveness of edible coating depends primarily on controlling the wettability of the coating solutions which affects the coating thickness of the film. Edible coating formulations must wet and spread on the fruit surface uniformly and upon drying this should form a coating that has adequate adhesion, cohesion and durability for pop proper functionality for proper functionality of the coated films. So, that is important consideration the wettability of a solid by a liquid is determined by the balance between the adhesive forces that is W A of the liquid on the solid and cohesive forces that is W C of the liquid. So, that has to be maintained W A that is the uh, adhesive forces they cause the liquid to spread over the solid surface while W C causes it to shrink. So, the equilibrium spreading coefficient W S is will be calculated using this uh, formula like W S is equal to W A minus W C 
or in other terms y s v minus y l v minus y s l that is y s v y l v and y s l are the solid vapor liquid vapor or solid liquid interfacial tension. So, from this one can calculate equilibrium spreading coefficient and this is always should be this should always be either negative or 0. So, after having and then let us say that the some of the coating material which is good quality coating material chitosan is the one such material which is used for the coating of the several products. It is a natural polysaccharide the second most abundant after cellulose. Although it has poor mechanical properties lack of water resistance, but it has high water permeability, high gases barrier, it has a broad antimicrobial spectrum and it has effective carrier of many active compounds. So, because of these properties this chitogen chitosan is used for edible coating of a variety of materials materials and in fact, these sometimes this chitosan is modified by acetylation processes to improve its hydrophobicity and emulsifying properties or for the stabilization of active compounds in chitosan that is. So, they modified chitosan, chitosan depending upon the poor material it is used and it is at present it is used common uh, good edible coating material. You can see here this is the case we have taken from the literature that is where it has been shown that appearance of a strawberry coated with modified chitosan based formulation containing limonene and emulsifiers was improved drastically there is a control it is a spoil only in 10 days, but the other coated depending upon the type of the coating differences even up to 16 days or in other case after 21 days its appearance was very good. Similarly, modified chitosan based coating and ready to eat vegetables you can say that is the other material they are all the how they are looking good. So, appearance is improved their self life is improved. So, next important aspect is that is the method of coating application how to apply this coating once you have a suitable coating material you have developed the formulation you know the important thing is to apply it because the application method will uh, uh, greatly uh, influence that is what is the thickness you are getting how whether uniformity of the coating that is it should be proper of uniform. So, and accordingly to get the desired benefits. So, different methods which are used for coating applications include dipping brushing method, sprowing method, fluidized bed method and panning method. So, I will briefly explain this one by one. In the dipping method as you can see here in this picture also that is the simple that is you prepare a coating solution and in the coating solution the material is dipped for desired duration of time and then after that it is taken out. So, this and dried. So, this allows the deposition of the and of course, the layer etcetera here in this case is controlled by controlling the concentration of the resolution by controlling the time for the dipping and so on. So, here in this slide I have shown you that is the preparation of edible coating material and its application to tomatoes by dipping method and uh, this is we work which we have done in our laboratory and the basis of that the method, but we take millipore water then sodium alginate is added into the millipore water with continuous stirring and then the solution is kept in water bath which is maintained at 72 degree Celsius for 30 minutes it is heated little bit stirred continuously and regularly until the solution becomes clear. So, once the sodium alginate solution becomes clear we add glycerol 
and other formulations we have developed several formulations for the edible, edible coating of material like tomato, guava, mushroom and so on. So, this you can see here in this uh, bottle in the picture that these are the coating solutions made in the laboratory. So, once you have the coating solutions of the desired consistency of the desired concentration, the next step is that is we take here in the beaker that is the laboratory process just to I am explaining to demonstrate you how it can be done that by dipping method if you want at a larger scale pilot scale accordingly you one can have suitable instrumentation and equipments for doing this. So, these tomatoes obviously they are washed right sorted graded and ensure that they are of uniform size good color etcetera. They here in this case they are dipped in coating solution of a desired concentration of desired strength for 5 minutes one can dip it for 2 minutes, for 10 minutes, for 9 minutes of course, depending upon the coating spreading required, thickness of the coating required other parameter that is required. So, after the required time the material is taken out of the coating solution right, it is allowed to dry at room temperature and then finally, it is packed in suitable packaging material are kept in the cartons etcetera as the case may be and is stored or at under proper conditions. So, that is then how you can perform edible coating of the by dipping method. The other technology which is the most commonly used technology for the coating of the fruits, vegetables or many other food materials etcetera is the spray technology. This spray technology for application of coating consists of a set of nozzles used in the formation of the droplet are used for the formation of the obviously, it has to be sprayed. So, some arrangement for spraying of the coating solution over the surface of the food material. Okay. Then it there is a sprayer tank to facilitate liquid pressure etcetera. So, that is to facilitate the spraying process there might be some heating jacket nozzle for temperature control of the liquid before its injection, conveyor belts to improve the products, data logger to control physical parameters such as pressure, temperature, ambient air, liquid flow rates. Uh, liquid label for the sprayer tank and so on. And then air system to participate in both the production of the droplets in the nozzle and the circulation of the liquid flow. So, these are the uh, accessories or instrumentation system required for the spray drying system. In this picture you can see here that is in the where here these are the spray nozzles and the food material. It comes over the conveyor belt all right, or by appropriate arrangement. The thing is that the spray coating solution is sprayed here that this is the sprayer tank by suitable piping and other instrument that is the liquid regulator and gauge etcetera. So, you can control the pressure of the spray that is how much a required concentration, required quantity of the uh, liquid or edible coating formulation to be spread and from the other side air is coming. So, this air that you can regulate the air also. So, having a proper balance between the air as well as the material which is coming here, one can ensure that uh, or you can apply the coating from one side or two sides to make sure that this uh, material is spread uniformly over the surface of the fruit or vegetable or other. In spraying patterns improves with increasing the operating pressure as well as increasing the fluid temperature. However, 
spraying pattern deteriorates with increase of fluid viscosity. So, by controlling this uh, operating pressure, fluid temperature, fluid viscosity and having a proper optimization of these having proper instrumentation, one can definitely that is it is a much better process than the uh, manual dipping process. One can control here the thickness and other characteristics. Another method is the fluidized bed coating. Fluidized bed coating process consists of obviously, a coating material the solution of the coating and it may be either in the form of a solution or in the form of a suspension and then a set of nozzles to spray the coating material onto the surface of fluidized powder to form a cell type of structure. So, in the edge is common in the fluidization technology that the material is fluidized in the air and then coating solution is surface uh, is sprayed on the surface of the material. Three different configurations of fluidized bed coatings process are there that is the top spray method, bottom spray method or rotating fluidized bed techniques. Top spray method is the more popular one which is used in the food industry for coating of uh, various material like chocolate or fruits or co-application of coating on fruits or some smaller or light material or powders etcetera. Okay. You see here that is a top spray fluidized bread coating the in this uh, uh, that is the inlet air flux the material powdery material or fluidized powder it gets fluidized and then the coating material coating solution is spread from the top through help of these nozzles and of course, this spray again there is the other arrangement which you have seen in the case of spray technology that so major difference between the spray technology and this is that in that case the material was coming may be and the through the conveyor belt and all those things here the material is fluidized that is so it's more visual that is inside this tank the fluidized by the air nozzle etcetera and the material moves fluidized so it may result in some time better coating or uniform coating similarly the bottom spray or other can be done pan coating as you can see in this uh, figure here it consists of depositing the product to be coated onto a large rotating bowl referred to as pan. So, in this pan the material is put here this uh, pan rotates and pan rotates and with the help of suitable spray nozzle the coating solution is spread over that is the product is tumbled within the pan to evenly distribute the coating solution over the surface of the food material. Forced air either ambient or at elevated temperature is applied to dry the coating. This gives you the some of the pictures that is our experimental sample in our laboratory that is the first case see here coated tomatoes after 48 days of storage at 10 degree Celsius and 90 percent relative humidity. This case here is the coated tomatoes after 65 days of storage in control atmosphere at 10 degree Celsius and 90 percent relative humidity. So, this results in significant that is the coating edible coating technology results in significant increase in the self life uh, of the tomatoes in the case of mushroom also you can see here these are the coated mushroom and the picture taken after 10 days of their storage at 10 percent relative humidity and 85 percent 10 degree Celsius temperature and 85 percent relative humidity. So, this has become a very good technology the method the, our laboratory experimental results says that the coating solution which you have formulated even we have done it by dipping method. So, it has a good potential that is edible coating technology has a vast potential of increasing the self life of fruits vegetables while maintaining their quality.
So, finally, you can say that a yes, edible coating can be used to protect the quality of the food, to carry natural antimicrobial compounds, to the functionality of the polymer can improve the protection and the release rate of the immobilized active compounds. Even cross linking reactions of natural polymers can improve the physico chemical properties of the films and their stability during storage period of the packaged food. Even edible active coating could be used in combination with modified atmosphere packaging and pasteurization treatments to reduce the bacterial growth rates as well as to assure food safety. So, this edible coating has a very good application in the extending the shelf life of whole fruits and vegetables and many other products and for many products it is used commercially. Thank you very much.